everybody, I'm Rebecca here at Why Mermaids, and it's Friday, so it's Tag Friday. That's what I'm calling it now. Just decided it's Tag Friday. Or do you like Tag Your It Friday? Let me know in the comments below which one I should call it. Anyway, it's a Friday and it's time to do a tag video. Today's tag is the Tom Hanks tag. And who doesn't love Tom Hanks? Like, I adore Tom Hanks. I really do. All of his movies are fantastic and fabulous. And he is amazing. <sighs> I was tagged by Caitlin over at Book Chats. And the tag was originally created by Emily Jean. And Sam from Thoughts on Tomes also added a few questions at the end. So I have links to all of their videos down in the description box below, as well as the questions and stuff about me and whatever. So check it out if you want to. You should do it. Onward with the tag. Well said! Number one is for Big. And it's a book you read when you were young that was probably intended for a more mature audience. I'm choosing Are You There God? It's Me Margaret by Judy Bloom. I read this when I was probably too young and I was like <gasps> at some of the things in that book. Other than that I couldn't really think of what I was too young to read. I kind of always had a more mature mindset than other people my age and so I they were books. I don't know. I loved books. I loved books. Number two, Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. What book did you pick up not knowing anything about? This book was chosen for me for book club and so it was like recommended from on websites and so they kind of chose it and I had really no idea what I was getting myself into but that was Wool by Hugh Howey and I ended up absolutely loving it and picking up the next two books in the series and finishing them. If you're looking for a good kind of adult dystopian that is in a, it's very different from all the other ones. This one is a really great pick to kind of jump into that world with. Number three is for Sleepless in Seattle, one of my favorite movies. And this is a book that kept you up all night sleepless reading. And it's the last book to keep you up all night reading. So I have chosen Golden Sun by Pierce Brown the second in the Red Rising trilogy. I try not to stay up too late anymore reading because I have work but this one did keep me up and I just didn't want to put it down because so many crazy things happen. Number four is for Toy Story and it's a timeless book you plan on sharing with any offspring you may create. And I love that word in there and for me obviously it's Harry Potter. Like I plan on reading this while I'm pregnant in the far future. I'm going to read them, all seven of them, while they're still in the womb and then they're going to come out loving Harry Potter or they will not be my children. Just kidding, but they're gonna love Harry Potter, right? Number five, you've got mail. A book you heard about on the internet and who you heard it about it from and I'm choosing The Name of the Wind by Morgan from Little Word Weaver. I am so excited to read it. I don't really know what this is about either. I could have used this for that one. But uh, she always recommends this one and I never heard of it before, so that's why I'm choosing this one. Number six is for Castaway, and it's if you could bring one book with you on a deserted island, what would it be? Obviously my answer is the entire box set of Harry Potter because that's not one book. I mean, that's not seven books, that's one book. I'm only taking one giant, gigantic book of Harry Potter. Because if I have to only read one book for the rest of my life, that's what it's going to be. And if I can only pick one from those seven, I'd probably pick number seven itself, The Deathly Hallows. I've talked about this before, but why I would choose it. But I just feel like it's a really great book and I wouldn't want to be left off at the end. I like to know what happens and I would want to reread it and reread it and reread it and yeah. Either that or Lord of the Flies because they eventually get off that island and it would make me feel... Although that's really bad too, because they do a lot of crazy bad things in that one. So maybe not Lord of the Flies. I'm going to go back to Harry Potter. I'm going to go back to Harry Potter. Number seven, Cloud Atlas. What book did you read that you had high expectations for, but it just didn't quite meet them? And for me, that's The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. I was recommended to this by a bookseller at Barnes & Noble, and I was very excited about reading it, and people on BookTube were very excited about it, and it just didn't really quite live up to those expectations for me. That is the end of the original questions. Now we're going to get into the four bonus questions 
that Sam from Thoughts on Tomes decided to add. So number eight is for Saving Private Ryan, and it's your favorite ensemble cast of four or more characters. Of course I'm choosing Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. There are a lot of characters in here. It's a very giant ensemble cast, and I couldn't imagine the book without any of them. And honestly, I would kind of want more. Some of the characters that I love, I don't get their POV, and I really wish I did. Um, so this one, it really is fantastic, and all of the characters are so well created and well drawn, and it's just a fantastic story. Number nine is for the Green Mile, and it's your most hated villain. I'm sorry I'm going back to Harry Potter again for this one, but I have to choose Dolores Umbridge, because she is so cray-cray evil, like, I hate her. I hate her. And I don't hate any other villain. I usually love the villains. I just, I really love them. But I hate Dolores Umbridge. Number 10 is for Turner and Hooch. And it's the, an animal character that stole the show. Animal characters always steal the show for me. And I just posted like a thing about why I'm vegan. Because I really love animals. And like animals, animals, animals. I love animals. Um, so obviously any character that's an animal is going to steal the show. But I've decided to go with The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Because there are a lot of animal characters in here that are not main characters. And they're just really great. I mean like Aslan always steals the scenes that he's in. The Beavers and Mr. Tumnus. Like... Oh, there are just so many great animal characters um, that for me to not say this one would just be terrible. And number 11 is for A League of Their Own. There's no crying in baseball. And it's your favorite female friendship. Now, no female friendship in books compares to that of A League of Their Own. It's such a fan. Ugh, I just loved that movie. But I have two answers for this one. My main answer is Diana Barry and Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables because their friendship really it's a their bosom buddies is what they call each other and um, themselves and it really is a really great female friendship. And my second choice, my little like offside choice because they're not um, it's not their friendship is not a main part of the story but I still really enjoyed it and technically it's kind of a weird are they really females because I'm choosing Cinder and Iko from Cinder because Iko is just so fun and the way that they are and they relate to each other um, is really 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 fun and so I just I couldn't not include them in this story or in this tag. Well that is it for me today with the Tom Hanks tag. I don't know who I'm gonna tag just yet because I'm doing this off the top of my head so I am going to just put who I'm tagging down in the description below so check there. I'll also probably send you a message on Twitter saying that I tagged you so please do the tag if you want to or just do it and Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks, I love you. Mwah. That's it for me. I will see you tomorrow.